Formula One is finally back and Austin has so much prepared for us, starting with the new surface of the track and ending all the way to the upgrades that the teams are going to bring to the circuit of the Americas. Obviously, the greatest amount of attention will be paid to teams like Red Bull, McLaren and Ferrari, as the Austrian team will probably see itself a bit more monitored due to the ongoing situation with their downfall. With a new floor and a more flexible front wing, could Red Bull finally catch up to McLaren? McLaren and will these upgrades be enough to keep the edge in the drivers championship? Red Bull has found itself in quite an unusual and unexpected situation in 2024 as throughout the first five races of the season even they couldn't believe that the competitiveness would be brought to this level and we would have seen any other driver other than Verstappen fight for the drivers championship but here we are and in the last six races of the season the Austrian team will place all of its bets on the new upgrade package that will arrive in Austin, which will revolve around a new floor and a new, more flexible front wing. Christian Horner has been quite outspoken about the flexibility of the front wings that certain teams have exercised throughout 2024, such as McLaren and Mercedes, and it is now obvious that this is a path that Red Bull will follow as well, accompanied by Ferrari. Be that as it may, it's worth noting that there is no guarantee that this is the silver bullet that Red Bull needs in order to get back to the top, but considering how all things stand right now, Verstappen doesn't even need to win every race until the end of the season. He just needs to be not outscored by more than eight points per weekend by Norris. This happened only once in Australia where Verstappen didn't finish the race due to a brake failure. So it's probably safe to assume that the odds are fairly on his side. To make things worse for McLaren, the hopes from Red Bull's side regarding the upgrade package in Austin are quite high and when talking about it to a greater extent, Helmut Marco said, in Singapore, Lando Norris showed strong speed and reduced his deficit to Verstappen to 52 points, while in the Constructors' Championship, McLaren extended the lead to 41 points over us. We need to improve significantly to turn things around and I am optimistic that we will be stronger again in Austin. As soon as Max starts winning races again, Perez usually steps up and then the whole situation looks completely different. But to do that, we need a wider working window for the car, which can't just function in a very narrow area and we need the necessary speed. So those are two factors and I trust our technicians to achieve that. Performance has to be demonstrated on the track, not just in the simulation. In the past, the lack of alignment between simulation and reality was one of the reasons why we were led in the wrong direction. This is something that caused a lot of problems for Red Bull and many have compared the issues that the Austrian team faced to the ones of Mercedes in the past couple of years, which is why question marks have now arisen over the new upgrade package the team has prepared for Austin. Whether we like it or not, Red Bull have found it extremely hard to extract a performance out of their upgrades, and this is something that Ferrari and Mercedes have faced as well, with the Silver Arrows having to ditch the floor from Spa because it didn't give them the expected performance and downforce that they saw in the simulator. A team that didn't have these issues throughout the season is McLaren and to make matters worse for Red Bull the Woking base squad has more upgrades in the pipeline for the remainder of 2024 as their primary goal now is the drivers championship after stabilizing the lead in the constructors category. Red Bull's team principal Christian Horner believes that we're at a natural point of the season where upgrades should be brought to the cars and the goal is to build on the basis of what the Austrian team started to realize back in Monza, a period that Verstappen described as the lowest point of the squad throughout 2024. Talking about the expectations of the Austin package, Horner said, I think for all teams, Austin will be a natural time of the year to bring some news. We have something important, but I think Ferrari, Mercedes and McLaren will also have updates. Our goal is to build on the basis of what we began to understand clearly after Monza and bring a car that is well balanced between the two axles to give confidence to the driver, but it will not be easy. 
If we look at Lando's performance in the first stint in Singapore, we need about 23 seconds. We started to figure things out and find some solutions, but we have a lot to do. Obviously, it will depend on how the car responds from a mechanical and aerodynamic point of view, but also on the tyres, which are particularly sensitive this year. Obviously, the reason why we have our doubts about Rebels upgrades is the deficit that they have to McLaren. In Zandvoort and Singapore, two high down for circuits where the flexibility of the front wing played a massive role in the performance of the car Norris finished the race with more than 20 seconds of advantage compared to Verstappen to think that this can be covered in a single upgrade package is definitely very far-fetched but again luckily for Red Bull they won't have to win a single race until the remainder of the season as long as Norris is not the victor and he doesn't outperform Verstappen by more than eight points in a weekend however Red Bull won't have enough time to test these upgrades because they only have one free practice session to see what the car is capable of with the new parts before they head into the qualifying for the sprint race. The three sprint races that are left on the calendar could be either a blessing or a curse for the Austrian team as they provide 24 more points to be grabbed for the most competitive challenger out there which right now seems to be Norris. If Verstappen gets to lose additional points here, it would very likely be the end of the championship streak that he's in right now, which could further pose a bigger threat for his future in Red Bull. And if we're to look at what Gunther Steiner said about the upgrades coming on at the RB20, it does raise a concern as to whether or not they are enough to keep McLaren and Norris at bay. The former Haas boss believes that the Austrian team would have to prey on mistakes from McLaren much more than the performance gains from their upgrades, especially considering the fact that the Woking Base squad has two drivers who are constantly finishing high in the points, unlike Red Bull. Elaborating further on this, Steiner said, I don't think catching McLaren this year will be possible. What the team showed in Singapore, for me, it was just amazing. It was amazing, you know? So I think that Ferrari can play a bigger role than they played in Singapore for the World Championship because in theory, they should be in front of Max, but they didn't qualify both of them. I think McLaren is in a good position, but Max will be fighting to the end to hang on to the championship. If Red Bull nails the upgrade in Austin, they would only get close to Ferrari and they can take advantage if McLaren makes a mistake or has something going wrong. I think Red Bull has to rely on McLaren messing it up rather than them getting it right. Speaking about McLaren, the Woking Base squad has truly been the team that everybody has looked up to throughout the season and what a turnaround it's been compared to where they started the 2023 campaign with the restructure of the technical team. From the bottom to the top of the table, this is a team that has shown that everything is possible if you have modern facilities and people who can develop the car in a perfect working environment but it looks like they're not going to stop anytime soon. When talking about the remainder of 2024, Stella was adamant that there are still a lot of things in the pipeline, including a brand new floor, but the team needs to trust the process and not do something that the other teams did and were then put in a bad position. Apply these upgrades to the car and further see performance disappear all of a sudden. Be that as it may, the ball is in Red Bull's court now and it's up to us to see whether they have what it takes in order to beat McLaren at their own game. With all this in mind, do you think that the new floor and front wing of Red Bull will work wonders for the remainder of 2024? Let us know what you think down in the comments below and once you do that, have a look at the video that's appearing on your screen right now.